Hey, Birdland, Melanie Newman with you here. And as the free agent market continues to roll on, we all know that there are a lot of free agent starting pitchers who are very nice prizes to be had still on the market. Now you might be asking yourself, why haven't the Orioles opened up those purse strings yet to really go out there and get the big guy? And I think that's important to take a look back at how teams generally like to be constructed. And those fall under a few different categories. And of course, you'll see those throughout the league. Now you have the teams that have fully established homegrown talent. This means that they have really given that prize possession on strengthening their farm system. Of course, that starts with the draft that also results in making trades. So sending away some big guys to get prospects to boost what you have down below. You've seen the Orioles do that a little bit. You also see the guys who have to spend to get that talent at the top. They don't really focus on the farm system below them because they have the money to continually go out and get the big names for the top dollar that's available. Now, the issue you might run into with this is the fact that that's not always sustainable. You can go out and get a big name. We're not going to name names, but they don't always pan out. Or sometimes the biggest talent doesn't always have the right chemistry to fit itself together. So this means you're spending more money than you would have to and not even getting the product that you ultimately want to see at the end of the day. You also have teams that will develop that talent at the farm system to trade it out to get the names that come back to them. While that's a little more sustainable, you're still kind of stuck in this rotating mill of never seeing that sustained success. So for the Orioles, they tend to fall in that first category of making sure that they're able to move out and make homegrown talent to acquire talent that they can grow and develop themselves and the image that they ultimately find the most suitable for what the Orioles see their future becoming. So that's why you're seeing a lot of these one-year deals, some lower money on the table, because this also ensures the fact that, yes, you can try out a well-established major league player and see if they fit in the system. Now, if they fit in the system, then all is great. You can keep them after that. You can choose to extend the contract, offer them a bigger package than what they were initially seeking. But if not, no harm, no foul. It's a one-year deal. It's been served. And they're always grateful for the impact that that veteran has been able to make on the younger guys they're ultimately waiting to make a big league impact for. So for the Orioles, don't expect Mike Elias to deter from the blueprint he has already put in place for the team as of now we have seen him make that successful pattern happen before down with houston and the astros of course they took home a championship as well but the plan is in place for a reason and for elias and his crew they seem to be steering the course just fine